Okay, now we're on stage three in this process. So what is happening here? In stage three, this is where we're now going to enclose the pressure vessel with our front and rear smoke box area. So that would incorporate the frame, the davit, doors, all the refractory. Here you can see we've already staged uh, the anchoring for the refractory that will go in this rear part of the boiler. Uh, also, at times, two, the, the, the pulse line number two and three, we will do our first hydro uh, for the pressure vessel to make sure everything is sealed, uh, whether it's tubes, whether it's our connections, everything to that boiler you know, is part of the pressure vessel. Okay. Um, as far as the, um, the refractory, that's all gets uh, poured in here? It's poured. We, we actually get? have frame models that okay. we use that will incorporate in here and they'll pour it from the top. Okay, uh -huh. and actually go in and they'll bead that in, put a right. beater in there to vibrate that and make sure we take care of all the void pockets. Okay. So everything is nice and full, yeah. no gaps whatsoever with that uh, process. When it cures, then we're able to pull that frame off uh -huh. and see a final product with the refractory. So probably something that people would want to know is the refractory. Okay, why is it, why is it even needed? On a dry bag boiler, it's, it's the heat barrier to protect the raw material of the pressure vessel. Okay. Okay, we're trying to keep that high temp, because when it's coming out of this end of the furnace, uh -huh. you're talking 2,000 degrees. Okay. And it's coming to the end of this, what we call a turnaround section of our, our rear smoke box. Right. So that reverses the flame into that. So it's critical on a dry bag boiler to have a good refractory that can withhold and, and, and keep that temperature away from that raw plate and keep it inside the boiler on into the tube. And the door also has refractory the on it as well. The door will also be fully refractory backed. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, are we ready for stage four? four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything on the front of the boiler? Let's take a look. Okay. Let's take a look. So we've come around to the front of the boiler and there's a few things you want to touch on this. Yeah. With, with a trailer type unit, we were able to help establish a nice outlet for the boiler. Typically on a regular fire tube boiler you would see the flue gas outlet on the top center at 12 o'clock on top of the boiler. Yep. But on this unit we needed an exit to the side of the trailer to where you can now attach to a, a stack sure. to allow the flue gas to leave the boiler safely. Yeah. So pretty flexible on when you guys are building boilers if you needed to stack over here or absolutely up top, you can do that yeah okay. with all the the sides our standard fire two products we also build hrsg uh, waste heat recovery units those are all custom designed mm -hmm. specifically for that application which we don't try to utilize a standard boiler for a waste heat recovery because yeah. we realize it's specific for its actual condition uh -huh. so that's one thing that we're very strong in that our depth with our thermal group is very very good so we're able to create, you know, non-standard, non-typical type design sure. to satisfy a customer need. Yeah. yeah, it worked well for us um, to be able to go out the side. So anything else here, any insulation, anything that goes yeah, in? Yeah, all you... this, while we're doing this, this section here will be a, a one inch uh, uh, insulation that we'll put in. Okay. We encapsulate that or encase that insulation. The old okay. days, we used to use a wonderful product called Rigidizer. Yes. So either spray it on or roll it on. Right. Well, sometimes you get a nice even coat. It'll last for a while, maybe a year if you're lucky. Sure. But with flue gas velocity, it's amazing how that will erode that important insulation because if that is gone, gets blown out your outlet, yeah. you have nothing protecting, nothing protecting that, that. that raw material. Mm -hmm. So that flue gas stream will cut that material like a, like a cutting torch over time. Sure. So with that little thin one inch or, or thin wall uh, metal sheet that we put across that, it just protects that, that insulation uh, throughout its, its, its operation without awesome. any concern. Yeah, it makes, makes and total we, sense. Victory, we do fully insulate our boilers uh, with a stainless steel lagging as well. I think very proud of our product. It's, it's a very beautiful, yes. well-finished product. and. Um, we're glad that we're able to provide that in all of our products. Yeah, no, definitely very, very good looking and something that we really like in our rental boilers, having that stainless jacket. 
Because we don't have, have to paint. Worry about it. That's <laughs> so, right. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's move on to stage four. Stage four. Okay, so we're at stage four now. Actually, in stage three, I know that they put those doors on and uh, then they're moving on over here to stage four. Yep. So maybe walk through the process now. We got them on. Well, what we do to just to make sure, because again, you're dealing with a very heavy door. Uh, when you're looking at a two pass design, that entire door is full of refractory. Uh, very heavy steel to be able to support all that weight as well. So you're talking 10, 12,000 pounds of, of weight here that this arm has to support. Yeah. So when you pull that away, we want to make sure that when it's in the field, we want to make sure that for any reason, if the anchoring point to that davit had failed, we still have another safety net by incorporating this, this safety cable yeah. to ensure that even though it may drop some, if we lost that, it wouldn't fully fall off fall on and land on top of an individual. You can imagine up inside of a trailer, and where does the guy go? I mean, he's absolutely he's, nowhere. He's, he's done. And I, I remember walking out and actually looking up and looking at the door of some of the older boilers, and I mean, it's literally a threaded bolt. And you, you know, even if you have all this stuff, if you just have a threaded bolt. Every time, everything is, I mean, it's every moving. Every time you're moving that, you're cutting that material. Yeah, yeah. Right so at some I, point. I just love the design. Uh, I know that uh, we had talked about that with you guys, and we actually had one of um, our service technicians that uh, um, a, a door did come off at a customer site, oh. and uh, fortunately, it did. Uh, he was okay, but man, we started thinking about that. Going, my gosh, all these years, and uh, some great innovation there. Love that. Uh, for the safety. Um, what else you got here on stage four? Biggest thing is just really talking about some of the, the feature safety features again of that product. The maintenance ability of that product. I can't stress that enough yep. about the ease of opening them. Uh, our manway handhold plates being able to get access to the proper areas of the lower section of your boiler. Yep. If you've got any kind of routine maintenance to remove sludge or repairs. One thing that I, I meant to say in stage one when we were talking about our, our tube layout, we pay very close attention about how much gap we leave around the furnace okay. and then on, on the outside edge of those tubes. Yeah. Because it allows you to be able to, if you, for some reason, if you had to replace a tube, I like to eliminate having to remove too many of the tubes unnecessarily. Sure. To where we, if it only takes one or two, you can drop them off to the side, outside or yeah. in the inside, allow them to fall in at the bottom section be able to pull those out if it ever happened. Right, that makes so, sense. Those are the things that we paid attention to with the serviceability of a product. Okay, so you got five stages, we're on four, and so let's move on to the fifth and see what we got. Okay. All right, so we are at stage five, final stage. Everything is getting buttoned up and getting ready to put a little bit of a fire in there. That's right. Right? Yep, now that we've got all the piping on the boiler, the required piping that's required for this specific project, uh, all your water columns, blow down piping, uh, your control panels, your pressure switches, and then also incorporating the burner system now into this system. Okay. So now in stage five, this is where we now allow the final wiring of all these components. Then we're gonna get electric to you know electric power to it to be able to qualify and test all the you know the landings of all these uh, items that are set up on this boiler check our safety interlocks to make sure everything is seeing each other. Uh, prove out a fire. If a customer would like to see this boiler lit off, making sure everything is going to start. Yeah. This allows in this stage to do a low fire test. Okay. So that's, that's satisfying a pilot and a low fire flame. Okay. Now, if you want to get this thing started up here, you all actually can do that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Right? We have full a full-blown fun full, uh, function test facility at, uh, here at Victory, so we can pipe this thing up, provide deaerated water, chemical treatment, blow down, everything to where we can create loads on that product to be able to test it from 25% all the way to 100% firing rate. Okay. As high as 82.5 on a fire tube boiler, 82,000 pound per hour wow. boiler. That's, that's incredible, yeah. awesome. All right, well, I think we've covered everything. I hope you enjoyed it. Oren, thank you very much you for bet. all that you guys do and take care of us. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.
Appreciate Oren hanging out with us today and talking about how those fire tubes are produced. Now, being here at Victory Energy, you can see the quality that's going on. Just for your information, we have got 50 horsepower all the way up to 2,500 horsepower that we keep in stock um, down here at Victory Energy. And anytime that you need something quick, we'll be able to take care of that. So make sure you give us a call. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, share the videos and go out and check out all the other videos on our YouTube page. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.